Right, let's go back to a premise. How many of you believe money changes hands when problems are solved? You don't know what my problem is if you don't talk to me. Okay? So, so, so if money does change hands when problems are solved, you need to be talking to as many people as you can to figure out what their problems are. Right? Now, how many of you have watched the interview, the interview between Jordan Belfour, Wolf of Wall Street, and Grant Cardone? And if you have not watched it, I'm going to suggest you watch this interview. It's very difficult to watch because these two guys do not like each other at all, and they have huge egos. And they both have a philosophy about selling, and they disagree on almost everything. But the beauty of the interview is Belfour says, what if a person doesn't have interest? Why would you waste time on a person that has no interest? Cardone says, no interest is a level of interest. Belfour's like, what? How can no interest be, be a level of interest? Well, here's the point. Before, you call, before I called Robert, he didn't even know who Coach Burt was. How much interest did he have in using my services? That, zero. That is literally no interest. After I call Robert, now he has a, at least a higher awareness of who I am. What if one day my interest level changes? My no interest can turn into interest, yes or no? So I actually agree with Cardone on this. Uh, let no interest, like you had no interest in using me as your coach because you didn't know who I was until I called you. And I said, I'm Coach Burt. Here's what I do. Have you used a coaching company before? How are you satisfied with them? Everybody see that? So you could take a person from no, like I had no interest in selling my condo with old Kenny from Pineapple Properties. Until one day I walked in, all of a sudden I had interest. Everybody, everybody with me here? So my point to you is this is a long... This is the, re the reason people don't do this, right? Is because they want immediate. They want to sell something to somebody right now. Like I'm literally, th like I had a woman in Birmingham the other day walk up to me after she knew that I bought these properties around the country. I've never met her. And she walked straight up to me. She didn't introduce herself. She's got a, she said, I got a perfect property for you. That's three and a half, it's only three and a half million dollars. And I'm like, that's not the appropriate way to do that. Like walk up and introduce yourself. Hi, I'm so-and-so. Nice to meet you. I understand you buy properties around the country to do retreats in. With your permission, I'll just start sending you some. And if you're interested in any, I'll just touch base with you once a month, once every other month. Everybody see that? That's initiating. The way she did it was all wrong. But her mindset is I'm going to walk up and sell him a $3.5 million property the very first time I met him. Okay? Now, here's my point. Let's say I don't know you. Let's say you're trying to court new customers. And I don't know you. The wrong way to do it is just by calling people up and trying to sell them something. The right way to do it is to call and say, look, I'm going to send you some things for you to review. Like we were trying to sell somebody something down in Alabama, and my sales team was like, they don't know who you are. And I'm like, that's a mistake. What you should have done is said, hey, I'm going to send you three or four videos of Coach Burt, and then I'm going to check back with you next week to see if you like what he's got to say. Everybody see that? Becoming known is senior to selling. Okay? Becoming known to people is senior to selling them something. So much easier to sell somebody something when, you, when, when they know you. Now, when you think about this, how many of you feel like during the day right now, there are very unpredict, unproductive times where you're not focused on new money? This is why I like the structure. 9 to 11, new money. 1 30 to 3, or 1 to 3 30, new money. 3 30 to 5, strategy. Now, should you be, let's, how many of you are solopreneurs? That means it's just you, no assistant, no team. Okay, what, what should be our goal? Say again? Drive yeah, drive more revenue because we eventually need to add more people. Like our number one goal should be let's drive enough revenue so we can have an assistant, so we can have one person making outbound calls. Now, I'm in talks right now with the group that's going to give me a call center, which means they're going to give me 30 to 40 people making thousands of phone calls a day. Every person who's ever seen me speak, every person that's ever bought a book, every person that's ever liked me on Facebook or Instagram. What, what, do you, what kind of damage can we do when we're making, instead of making 80 calls a day, 3,000 calls a day? Pushing them to something in the future. Everybody see that? You need to be thinking about expansion like that. There's only so much one or two or ten people can do. You need to be thinking, how do I get 5,000 people? Okay? So the main thing 
every day should be focused on if I'm playing offense versus defense, new money, new money, new money, new money. That's the main thing. That's the main thing. Don't get confused about what the main thing is. Okay? So you've heard me talk about Neapolitan ice cream. And Neapolitan ice cream is chocolate, strawberry, vanilla. And it, 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 it's clearly delineated. So I would tell Jason, you don't need to be servicing customers. At the same time, you need to be trying to sell new people. From 9 to 11, he puts that phone on and he goes out to the public and he, he, call, he outbound calls. He services customers in the afternoon. He solves problems in the afternoon. He touches his past clients in the afternoon. But he don't mix them together. Everybody see that? Clearly delineated times to do one thing. Okay? So what am I doing every day? It's real simple. Calling and initiating with new people every day. How many phone calls do we need to be making, by the way? <clears throat> okay? 16% of people are going to be interested, guys. I don't know how many you're making, but if you're making four... 16% of four is a small number. How many do you need to be making every day? How many outbound dials do you need to be making? Are you tracking, if you have a team, are you tracking their phone calls? Are you using their phone calls to teach them how to sell? Are you tracking the number of calls they make? Are you listening to them? Are you coaching them? So number one, we should be calling and initiating new people. Number two, we should be closing people in the pipeline. That's a million dollar follow up. Number three, we should be spending time engaging and staying in the face of our current customers. Constantly, in the face. Constantly, in the face. Okay? <clears throat> we should be engaging with and moving a statistic in your, in your top 25. That means you're moving your top 25 people down, down the deal. You're helping them move their ball down the field. This is something we should be doing every single day. Now, I want you to look up here and I want you to tell the person at your table where your current sales system breaks down. This is the entire sales cycle. Starts with leads. We're using the legacy selling system to drive leads in the door. We're creating leads. Why, how are we creating leads? Hit list, farm club, top 25, social media push, events, database. That's how we're creating leads. Everybody see that? Call and pass customers. We're creating leads. They come in the door, we connect, we build rapport, we do discovery, we share our value, and we push them to something in the future. Every person in this room needs something for free. Free strategy session. Free review of your insurance. Free consult. Free, free video. Okay? If I don't know you, what's the likelihood of me doing business with you? Push me to something for free. Come to this. Be a part of this. Get involved in this. They either say yes or they give you objection. If they say yes, it then moves to a seven-touch follow-up system. Will Cooper, how many touches do you think most people in, in your world go? When a person indicates interest. Yeah, see, here, here's what I would tell you. You ain't even in the ball game on two touches. Reminds me of when I was coaching basketball. I looked down to put a girl in the game. And I said, hey, get in the ballgame. She's like, no, no, I'm scared to get in. She didn't want to go in. I was like, girl, you're going to have to, learn, you're going to, have to get in the game to actually do something, right? Well, you, you're not even in the game on two touches. You need seven touches in your follow-up. Now, once they commit, now i got a new customer, what do I need to be doing? Onboarding, engaging, transforming, and advocating. So I want you to look up there right now and tell the person to your right or left, my sales system breaks down right here. This is where my system is breaking down. Take a second and tell them.